making Soho commercialized street and trying to create their own student housing. We've seen how destructive it's been in Figueroa's movement. And my question is, what can you say to the communities and local authorities as a part that, hey, you will be respected in this project? I think, um, thank you for your comments. I think we've actually worked pretty hard to get out to the community to talk about what's happening on the campus. We've been focusing on the beautification project, but we have also at every meeting talked about the fact that we have folks to do a hotel that we're working with the developers to bring the student house into the project. Um, this is land that the university owns and has owned for a while, so we didn't go out and acquire this land from anyone recently to do this. Um, and really the goal here is to try and improve this campus and the community. There are a lot of benefits that you get when you have students that are living on the campus as opposed to having them drive in on a day-to-day -day basis. You have reduced traffic on your neighborhood streets. You have people who are actually invested in the community and living in the area, want to patronize the businesses. And as Mr. Pacheco, you talked earlier about our, our faculty student housing loan. We're actually really proud of that program. We want to incentivize our staff and employees to live in the neighborhood, to be invested in the community, and that's why we do that. We think that's actually really good for the community to have people that from that work in the university that also live in the community. So um, we are absolutely trying to be respectful. We've been very engaged in this process. I think um, hopefully the community understood that. I, I think we actually are very happy with what we've done in terms of moving the street alignment, and that was directly in response to issues that the community brought up. So. We're trying to work very closely with you all. We've been out to Ramona Gardens. We've been out to Lincoln Heights. We've been to El Sereno. We've been engaging the community. Um, and, and we will continue to do so. When these projects are built, we're not going to stop this outreach process. We work very hard. We have a lot of programs that the university does to invest in the neighborhood. We've just brought the Neighborhood Academic Initiative. We've got students at Murchison, at Sheridan, at um, this is one of the private schools at three or four of their schools where we have a program where we're going to be bringing these students through a six-year, seven-year process of tuition, of um, tutoring, preparing them for college, and at the end of that, when they graduate from high school, they have the ability to have a full scholarship at USC. So we're trying to invest in the community in a lot of different ways. Uh, I, might add, I also lived in graduate student housing, and it was... Well, it was a dump. I don't. I have nothing to say nice about it. This is this is going to be clean, decent housing for future doctors and for future pharmacists who can then help uh, meet the demands that are being placed in the medical community because of the, of, of the Obama Health Care Act. So this is this is a good thing. It's a good thing for the students. I think it's a good thing for the community. Uh, you know, we're certainly uh, on behalf of ACC want to want to hear your concerns. That's why we're here tonight, and we appreciate all the, the good comments and questions you. Do you have any other questions? No. Mr. I'm a board member of LA 32, a member of council, and my question is this. Uh, I served on the, I don't know if you guys, you guys remember the Community Redevelopment Agency? You guys remember? Okay. Um, well, I, I never had any fond memories of the Community Redevelopment Agency. They never done Jack, anything really to help our community out. To be very honest, I served as the chair of housing, and I served like, uh, six or seven years on that board, and I haven't seen them do anything with me. One of the things that I kept requesting, and I'm going to ask you this very specific question, what union syndicates do you have that would be doing the direct construction of this project? And from those union syndicates, how many of those union members actually live within three to, I'll even go as far as five mile radius of the project? Uh, the reason I'm saying that because we had the construction of the hospital, and uh, I'm not saying nobody from the general area worked there, but I could pretty much tell that very a handful of people that actually live in the area actually participate in the construction program. So what I want is a job fair. I want the unions to give up some of their union syndicate members to provide some job positions for some of the local residents who are job poor in this district here, uh, upwards of maybe 10, 50% of the project. 
And I'm not asking that they be unqualified. I'm sure there's qualified carpenters, qualified plumbers, and stuff like that. I also would like for your acquisitions, wherever your construction company is, wherever they acquire the building material, to be aware that if they go out within a five mile radius and possibly provide an application process on how local businesses, we've got a hardware store right here down the street that provides lumber, nails, plumbing supplies. Uh, there's, a, there's a few stores in Lincoln Heights that, that there's hardware stores there. And so there's some hardware stores in Wall Heights. Okay, if you could make your acquisitions of building material, at least, I don't know, 20%. You know, I know there's some material that they can't provide, maybe some of the steel, maybe there's some that they cannot provide, but I'm sure they could provide some of the, the furnishings for restrooms, or the tiles, or maybe help you provide the wood, or the nails, stuff like that. So if you could make, um, go out in the community and try to engage the local businesses that provide hardware to provide some of the materials for the for the business, that would be a good economic boost for the for the immediate area being impacted by this project. And it's a good neighbor policy. So what I'm asking for you to do is to provide a job fair, to have a job fair open in Lincoln Heights, have a job fair at Hazard Park, provide some advertisement in the local newspapers or in the Spanish media or whatever, <coughs> saying USC is having a local job fair. You know, residents that live within certain zip codes, you could name the zip codes. Zip codes to do in a five mile radius, because I'm one, more than willing to have people from South Central uh, be provided jobs here in this region, because they're within about five mile radius. So I'm not just saying hire people from Lincoln Heights, hire people from El Sereno or out from Bo Heights. I'm saying a good, uh, I think it could be five miles, it could be South Central, because they also need jobs. So there's a there's an incentive for you to provide jobs in the area that would be looked upon, be good press, good media, and it would be good for you, good for us. It'll be a good outreach, it'll be a good faith effort. And I think we benefit, you benefit, we could all live in this. What happens is, we got people that come from, uh, for example, the train station that was supposed to bring jobs, never bought anything. I mean, the, the train station is empty. Uh, all the bus depots, all the businesses around it did not really prosper from the, the train station. And the, and the employees that came in were employees brought in from other states, other regions. Okay, the same thing with the hospital. The employees in the hospital and not live in this region. So, um, which is good. I appreciate the fact they did the work. I'm sure they got salaries, but it benefited everybody else but the immediate area. So if you could do a local job fair and you concentrate within a five mile radius and you could also um, provide an acquisition process so that the local hardware stores could sell you some lumber, sell you some wood, sell you some nails, and I'm sure you can work out with them exactly what you want. I'm sure they'll be able to provide it, but at least get them in profit and get them in the, because they hire directly from the community and they spend money directly from the community and they live within the community and they spend the money in the community. So you're actually helping that money cycle in the community, helping the community out. And I trust you, there's needy hire, needy hearts, uh, needy hearts <coughs> for the community. I was wondering if I could maybe, you know, we take a drive and I can introduce you to some of these business people and then you could, just give them an application on how it works. It's, some of these people don't, they're oblivious. I mean, I'm here because I'm, I'm networking in LA 32, but a lot of businesses that don't know about your, you know, you're, not only you're building this, you're also building a, a commercial center, you know, next door. I know that, but a lot of people are not really aware of it. And then if they do become aware of it, they don't know how they can become participants as business people, as chambers. And we, we got the El Sereno Chamber of Commerce I don't know if they're active right now, but there's, there's LinkedIn Heights Chamber of Commerce that would like for you to talk to them. Maybe after we don't mind to give them a whole list And then we got the Ball Heights Chamber of Commerce. Was, I think it's an excellent idea, and I look forward to So you can work with them directly. But I'm just giving you options where there's local meeting stores, there's maybe a job fair in the immediate area within those parts, and maybe you could get some local efforts to get some local people hired to construct your, your project. Excellent idea. Long as you your credentials and you've got there, that's Excellent. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, Mr. Garcia? Good news. Uh, I know you guys, you know, you guys uh, stayed again and again to the IDOC project. But I just have to say that this project isn't an EIR. 
So it is a USC project because it is under USC EIR. I just want to say that because it was included, right, in the EIR. It was analyzed in the city's EIR. So it's part of the it's overall bill to USC. Just, just clarify. Um, I, I'm glad to hear that, you know, uh, this business will have less cars, uh, which means less of an impact on the community, less uh, parking spots being taken up. Uh, but I didn't hear anything about the hotel and its retail stores and its employees. Where they going to park? Because they could have had to park somewhere else well, right? Uh, these are people that be working at that hotel that's going to be built later on. Retail stores are going to be set up. We we'll have, we'll have employees that be working there. The yeah. cuts, the maintenance people at the hotel. Uh, has that been also uh, well, discussed? Well, just, as, as Lori mentioned, there, there is no hotel at this point. But there, there, there's a hope for a hotel, but if, uh, if and when the hotel comes through, it'll be part of the public process, and there's excellent questions. We'll all be vetted, and we'll have a solution, or USC will have a solution for all those issues. So well, then now, huh? <laughs> well, because the, 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 not, the, the American campus is not developing the hotel. I, I can tell you that. Tonight, right here, we have no interest. We don't, all we do is student housing, so we're not developing. And then is that you can take care of your stuff, that's it. You'll see it on their own. No, but, 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 but we're, we're, we're building 1,700 parking spaces. Right. So that's hotel parking, that's you know, campus parking for a medical office building. It's parking to address demand because of the yeah. space. We're adding a lot of campus. But also, I know that over on the, uh, the uh, USC's overall master plan, there will be a lot of uh, patients going there using that parking as well. Uh, I, know, I know there will be several uh, hospitals or clinics that will be built. And from what I read in the EIR, um, the outpatient is one of the most uh, environmentally damaging of all, you know, in terms of concerning uh, pollution, the car thing, you know, environmental pollution, because it comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. Yeah, yes. So just, to, just letting you guys know that. Don't just think that because it's a solid and solid. I, mean, I think this hotel will have an impact that you guys don't see you know, it now, but it will later on. We look forward to working with you to solve this problem. So. Well, that's good. Uh, one last thing, another two more things actually. I know you guys have parking that's outside of the campus that's cheaper for students, right? Is that what it is? The closer you are to the campus, the more it costs to park. Yeah, there's a surface parking lot here that's from this lot, and this lot are probably the cheapest options. Right, and notice that you have shuttles that move around uh, the campus or the, the area of streets. Uh, like it's probably not students, or picking up staff and students. We have, we have a tram that serves the campus, it goes to Union Station, so people can come in with transit, and then also the campus. My concern is that while well, you can have some cars off the, you know, off the streets by having this, this um, student housing, you also create a lot of more pollution by having all these shuttles out there. Because if you go out there, on Soto or Valley and stand there on any given day, you will see, you will see van, I mean, shuttles all day long, for hours. I was there on Veterans Day at the campus. Veterans Day is a holiday. You will see it was booming. Shuttles left and right. Now, my child was not on elementary, which is off on Soto, not, not that far from you know, one of your locations that I see shuttles going into, in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, so it, on one hand, you do solve some problems of uh, pollution and cars, but then again, it's shuttles that you have out there. And the numerous shuttles at numerous stops and numerous locations going on. But I guess I, I would counter and say, uh, how many people are on those shuttles? Is it 10, 15, or 20? So you have one tram versus 10 or 15 cars. Well, no, and then it's a clean fleet. We also That's run cool. clean, you know, uh, low emission vehicles. So there is that benefit. I'm just saying, there's a lot of cars out there, not only for pollution, but also safety. You know, kids are out there still. You know, because you know, high school down the street as well. After right. school, they come out, you know, from the street, the bus stop, or walk home. So I'm just concerned about, you know, concerned about that as well. Um, lastly, these could be funds. How are they going to be divided up between CD1 and CD14? Because while well, USC is in CD1, has a part in CD14, and so is Lutano, and for the Royal Heights as well. Because I think you can hide the CD1, right? Isn't Valley Boulevard the delineation between CD1 and CD14? Yeah. But the health campus is part of CD, um, well, it's part of the Lincoln Heights and CD. <coughs> CD1? It's, it's, it's CD14. I believe, I believe the boundary line cuts are Valley. Yeah. Okay, and then it cuts down towards a uh, mission. So, so I would believe actually most of the campus 
Bowser Valley Boulevard and East of Mission Road is all CD14. Um, so I believe both both of the pro almost all the project area here is CD14. He sometimes gets confused because he looks at the neighborhood council map, Lincoln Heights for Lincoln Heights NC, however that was drawn up, has incorporated most of the health science campus of the Lincoln Heights into the CD1 entity. I want to hear Mrs. Fayez let us tell us what it is that we've done this fight. We go city one or city fourteen. I want to hear from him being a counselor to the F here. Yeah. Uh, what's going to happen with that? Well, I'm not a, a, a the planning expert in my office, so I can't tell you about Quimby funds. Uh, I could do a report back as it relates to how Quimby funds are dispersed and how would that, you know, go down. But I, I'm not an expert in terms of Quimby funds, so I'll put a report back on that. Yeah, yes, that's how I was going to uh, uh, well, ask and see. Yes. Also, how the, the funds be divided amongst the parks that are affected in the area? I'm I want to know how the funds be divided up between the parks that are you know, within that city. At the hills, at the park. Yes, it's, uh, I know it's a radius. Uh, I, think, I think it's probably like a half mile radius or something like that. But I will, I will well, yeah. go back and follow up. Right there.
are going to have, you know, to multiply and infect the surrounding communities. Any, any thoughts on that, Lori? Right. So we have the parking that we propose. So there's a certain, there's a structure that we're coming on, and then mm -hmm. the surface parking lots. And then in terms of traffic, there are mitigation measures that are identified in the EIR where we would be doing traffic improvements that relate to the development as it comes on. Okay. But it's already been. Have you talked about maybe a one-for-one -one ratio of parking to unit ratio? No, it exceeds all the demand that we've seen, and I don't think it's actually what you want to encourage in providing and the opportunity for a one-to-one -one, uh, parking. What we've done in numerous focus groups and surveys is we've, we've surveyed, I don't know, I think the response back was probably 600, 600 700 students or so. Focus groups, we hosted four of them. Uh, even in the off-campus market, that the students that have to commute to school, they have to have a car for and most of the time, they're 80% parking. Okay. Let's move away from the mobility factors then. I was a graduate student living at the complex, and I'm not, don't have a car on site. What sort of entities can we use, public transit-wise, shuttle bus-wise? I know, for example, Lincoln Heights has a business improvement district that works primarily on Broadway. Their potential, maybe USC partnering with the business improvement district and having some sort of shuttle services to the various various uh, businesses along Broadway per se. Like for example, I'm a student, I need to go to market to buy food. So I have some sort of shuttle service throughout most part of the day to shuttle between various businesses along the corridor. To, and it's a win-win here. You, first of all, you're taking cars off the street and you're also getting people to use like some sort of transit to market, to do business within the surrounding community. We actually already do that for them. We have 96 students that live on campus, and on the weekends we do a shuttle service for them to Alhambra or some of the local markets. It's predominantly, for whatever reason, the students that are in that housing are predominantly international, and there are markets in Alhambra that they like to go to. So it's something that we already do. It's something we can look at. Why not local? I'm saying it's something that we can look at. Right. I mean, I would, I would think, like, for example, Lincoln Heights is the closest neighbor to town from that proximity you have. Locations along the corridor, maybe those comments may stimulate the business improvement district or the chamber of commerce, and maybe go more upscale. You know, move away from the 99 cents store mentality or whatever. But uh, okay, but uh, to uh, but I think those issues there. I mean, if you if you're really trying to say, hey, let's just get away from the driving mentality, having some sort of assets to the surrounding community to stimulate business within the surrounding community instead of taking our sales tax dollar to another city. Okay, we'll go a long way to making this to making this project even more accessible. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, Mr. Francis. Yeah, I have two questions. In your in your past presentation, uh, have any questions or concerns or, or uh, ideas come about if you were to uh, assist? We have a project right now. I'm sorry. It's the Soto Valley um, Bridge widening. And in some of the presentations that we had from the city, uh, one of the, some of the questions we had was there is no pedestrian, uh, uh, let's say, um, way to come down from Soto down to Valley Bowl. And there is no plans on it because there's no budget for it. Well, has anybody asked for your assistance? In this project at all? No, no, sir. Okay, well, you know, we, we definitely need some help in assisting the city to address that. Because there is no pedestrian walkway coming down from that bridge. They have to go, they would have to go all the way down from the bottom, I mean, basically through the streets. Uh, and then the other question I have for you is you have 177 units, you only have 130 um, <coughs> park members. These units, are they, are the price per unit going to vary depending on whether it comes to the parking space? Well, the parking will be provided. The 130 space is for free. 
free, so no. Right, so 130 spaces for the entire 177? Yeah, again, based on- They're, they're not designated parking spaces, say, for you. No, they are not. They are, as a condition of CPC's approval, was to provide 130 free spaces adjacent to the property for anyone for free. No, for, for the for the, for the, for the, for the students. Yes. Anyone in excess of that ha would have to just follow parking policy. And, on and it'll probably be first come, first serve uh, for the allocation. There are various price points throughout the community for the different accommodation types. Okay. Um, but the, uh, the parking will be for free. Okay. You know, uh, I miss a few of the community meetings, but I, although I heard your, your your presentation here at this committee, and I, I, I personally appreciate your, the changes that you've made based upon what the community is concerned with. And one of them is the parking. I think that's a big one. And some of the some of the help that has been park is used uh, on parking, for example. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, but the other thing is that. Mr. Aguilar came up with a great idea, and I think this is, uh, Mr. Aguilar and myself were on the CRA, Adelante group, and this is one of the things we kept trying, to try to get these big developers to hire within, local hire, and those we had, I don't think it's ever happened. So if you guys could at least meet us, you know, partially, and try to help in doing so, it would be greatly appreciated. And, and so, I, can, we, can we get some kind of commitment from you? We can't commit right. on person. Well, you, yeah. What we can commit to is if you provide us with some information for these specific groups that you're referring to or businesses, we can certainly reach out to them. We're going to have qualifications that they have to meet just as a means of protecting the, the development in forms of insurance and bond requirements. Our general contractor will absolutely provide those to these various businesses to make sure that they are indeed qualified. Um, we do it all the time. We're always happy to do it. But it starts with you guys providing us the information so we can make sure our general contractor who really runs that process, the information he needs to reach out successfully. I think with, with the help of the neighborhood council and I think the councilman's office, I think, uh, could provide you a, a good understanding of maybe where we can